Hey everybody, uh, this is Carson Clues, and we are now beginning uh, video three of our series for new students that's meant to go over how you can get the most out of your martial arts training here at the school. Uh, video three, we're going to talk about three, four things today. Number one is uh, I'm going to start this video with uh, our school's vision statement so you know exactly why we're doing what we're doing. Um, and then I'm going to talk about the difference between choice and content, or the difference between choice and abilities. And third, we'll talk about how that affects our expectations for white belts. And then after that, uh, our goal is that if you're having that car conversation with your child, or um, if you are an adult talking to your support team, uh, we want you to know exactly how to encourage each other to get the most out of your martial arts training. So first, I'm going to start with our vision statement, um, and it's a paragraph, but it really matters to us, and I hope you'll see why. Our school's vision statement is that our school exists to use the physical and mental training available in the martial arts to develop the character and skills of our students. The ultimate reason for this is to create opportunities and to prevent loss of opportunities for everybody involved with our school, uh, for our students, for parents, uh, for our instructors and staff team, and then for the community that we're connected to. So that is our vision statement. We want to use the physical and mental training of martial arts, develop the character and skills of our students, or the character and the abilities of our students, so that they have more opportunities in life. So with that in consideration, let's go over character and skills or abilities. Um, should, somebody's, uh, should somebody be rewarded for their skills or should somebody be rewarded for their choices and their abilities? Well, um, we want to prepare our kids and adults and everyone for what the world is like, for, for what the world is like. And so we believe that choices are important but that they have to lead to abilities. So choices, for example, um, choosing to get out of bed when you're tired, choosing to be kind to somebody when you feel upset, choosing to do one more push-up when your muscles are, are tough, um, all of these things are choices, or choosing to study for a test. Um, now scoring highly on a test, that's an ability. Uh, you can want to score highly on the test and not, but the choice to study leads to the ability to score highly on the test. So. Um, choices are so important to us, but because those choices lead to abilities. So, as we talk about, you know, should a student get their belt rank for doing their best? <laughs> that depends. Do they do their best that day, or have they been doing their best up to that point? So, what we're watching for is not does the student do their best that day. Let me back up. For the white belts, we are. So, um, right here, the ranks we have. I'll cover the colors of the belt ranks later for now. Beginner, intermediate, advanced, and black belt. We got ranks on the way there. So the question here is, um, should we base their requirements, their advancement, on their choices or their abilities? Well, once they're a black belt, they had better have skills. They better have abilities. If they don't, they really shouldn't be a black belt. Uh, so, but, does their choice kind of count? Yes, but their choice is proven by their abilities. The choice to make it to class, the choice to bend that front knee and train hard that develops that strength, the choice to stretch out to increase that flexibility. So, advanced, we'll watch for their abilities, but at the very beginning, we're watching only for their choices. For white belts, we'd, lo we'd love to see their abilities, but the ability is not the requirement. The requirement is the choices they're making. So, let's switch to the other one. Uh, as we're talking about what do we want from white belts, what do we expect out of white belts? Let's cover that really quick. Um, white belts, there's really only three things we care about. There's three. Number one is the white belt focusing or improving their focus, and that means focusing their eyes and also controlling their body. If they're wiggling or they're not standing correctly, then they're not focused. In order to make sure they're focused, their eyes have to be watching the teacher or their target, and their body has to be controlled, or their body has to be under control, or their body has to be under control. If they're loose, they're not focused. So number one is focus. Number two is immediate response to instructor's commands, immediate response. Not delay, not slow. When the instructor says to do something, you do it fast. 
Third is developing a yes I can attitude, a positive mental attitude. An attitude that says this might be hard but I'm not gonna give up because I can do it. These three things are all we care about for white belts because if the white belt gets these three things down, then there's gonna be nothing we can't teach them on the way to black belt. In the same way, if on the journey to black belt, the student loses one of those things, then we really have nothing to teach them until we get it back. So everything is built on these, and therefore these are what white belts get their stripes for. Once we get to orange belt, their stripes are for knowing their material, um, the, the ability to the material that's based on the choices of focusing and learning and practicing and getting those down. So, with that in consideration, we want to talk about the car talk on the way home. You're going to see instructors where a white belt does the technique wrong, maybe does the technique with the wrong side, and you're going to see the instructor ignore it. And that's normal. Sometimes we'll get it, but sometimes we'll ignore it. It doesn't mean we're not paying attention, and it doesn't mean that we're lowering our standards. It actually means that we have a higher standard because we are tactically choosing when we're going to handle it. Okay? So, at that moment, we don't care about lefts and rights. We care about, are they watching me? Are they immediately responding? Maybe every other kid in the class is pointing at me when they front kick, and the new white belt is just kind of putting the foot out there. But every time we say front kick, they do it. We know that if we reinforce that, they feel successful because they followed the directions right away and we noticed, that as they improve their focus, as they improve their immediate response, as they prove their yes I can, eventually they'll watch the instructor and they'll point their knee because they focused on it. And the instructor said, hey, I'd like you to start pointing your knee. So everything is built on these. So one last thing before we continue, um, the car talk on the way home. It's so important that if your kid meets the requirements that the stuff they can't do is not the focal point yet. So, we want to dwell on those victories. At the same time though, obviously we don't want to lie to our kids and say they did a good job when they did a bad job. But the thing is, what are we emphasizing? So parents of new students, if your child focuses, they have immediate response or yes I can attitude, or if your child is improving at these, maybe they were focused for a little bit and they started to lose it. If we can draw their attention to those victories, then they'll crave more of those victories. And then, as soon as they start doing these, you'll start to see the abilities come out and you can clap for them for the way they front kicked. Uh, but if we're emphasizing these and you point out that your kid didn't keep their hands up during class, it won't make them a better martial artist, it will make them a worse martial artist. Everything is built on that. So help us reinforce those, help us up-level those, and you're going to see everything come later on. So, um, again, this video does not have a grandmaster quote, it has our school's vision statement. So one more time, our school exists to use the physical and mental training available in the martial arts to develop the character and skills or abilities of our students. The ultimate reason for this is to create opportunities and to prevent loss of opportunities. We don't want a bad guy to take the opportunity away by hurting us. Uh, we want to create opportunities for everybody involved. We want to create more opportunities for our students, create more opportunities for our parents. Yes, we want to create more opportunities for our instructors and staff, and we want to create more opportunities for the community that we're connected to. So. Thanks for watching video three. Next video, we will talk about um, what happens if you want to bring your friend to a class. I'll give you a hint, they get to take a free class. I'll cover more of that later on. Thanks everybody.